Welcome back to Z Code System here on YouTube. It's great to have you back here with us once again for our picks and predictions video. And this week, we're going to be talking about the K League, the Korean top flight of soccer. It is back this weekend after being postponed due to the COVID 19 pandemic, but it is back and it's going to be better than ever as the world's eyes are tuning in this weekend to the K League and it's going to have the biggest audiences ever. Uh, of, de of international broadcasters and uh, fans watching along to see the action. The world is thirsty for sports once more, and the K-League is going to be one of the leading lights of leagues coming back after the postponements due to the coronavirus. Now, the K-League was supposed to kick off back in February, at the end of February, but due to the outbreak of the coronavirus, the league was suspended and pushed back, and now it will kick off with games taking place behind closed doors in the beginning. But reports have said due to the uh, numbers of the coronavirus decreasing greatly in South Korea, that the league will gradually let fans back into the stadiums to watch the games, which is great news for everyone. Now, the K-League could be the first league, or hopefully is the first league, to begin a wave of leagues coming back as cases of the coronavirus decrease around the world. Uh, leagues in Europe have already said that they will be coming back, or a few leagues, that is, have said they will be coming back. Poland, for one. Uh, Denmark, Sweden, all coming back in May and June. Uh, Spain's La Liga and Germany's Bundesliga are also hopefully coming back. But today, we're going to focus on a couple of matches from the K-League. I'm going to preview those for you and give you my picks and predictions because this is going to be a very exciting weekend of football that kicks off on Friday, May 8th, with the game between Suwon Samsung Blue Wings. They will be visiting last year's champions, John Book. So this is going to be a fantastic game to kick off the season. And uh, I know where I'm based in the UK that this game is going to be on my television at 11 a.m. on Friday. So I'm going to be tuning in uh, from 11 till 1 p.m. watching this game. Very excited about that. So let's take a look at my picks and predictions. I've picked out three games and you can also go over to the Z Code System blog check out what I've written there and get those picks and predictions, get a little bit more information. And of course, go over to the VIP club, which is what I have here right in front of you, where you can get all of the stats, picks, predictions, and join the community and use all of the tools we have, especially the soccer buddy, which will give you a lot of great information to help you make your investments on these games. So we're going to be taking a look at three games today from the K-League that will be taking place. And I've picked a game for Friday, a game from Saturday, and a game from Sunday. So you'll have a, an overview of the weekend. Now, the league features 12 teams, and we have six games coming up this weekend. The season has been decreased from 38 games down to 32, and the K-League does an interesting little twist uh, in the uh, towards the end of the season. Uh, the league will split into two, and we will have basically a playoff in a way between the top six teams and a playoff to relegation between the bottom six teams. So it's a little twist. It's the same thing that we see in Scotland uh, with the Scottish Premiership. And it's also what we see in Belgium with the uh, division there, the top flight division in Belgium. So just an interesting twist on the traditional way that we have soccer uh, in the Premier League in England, and as well as uh, the way that they do the playoffs in, say, Mexico or in the United States. So let's take a look at our first game, and I'm just going to scroll down here. And, of course, guys, if you could just give us a like and a subscription or subscribe here on YouTube to keep up to date with everything we do with Z Code System, and you can get these picks all season long when we post about soccer. Now, of course, you can see that there are some games going on on Friday, also some games from the Belarus Premier League. So you can check those out as well here on the Z, the Z Code System VIP Club. But I'm going to show you Suwon and John Boot because we're talking about the K League. And I've clicked on that, and that brings us right down to here. And again, this is the first game of the season. So uh, 
you know, not a lot to go on in the fact that also these teams are coming off of a hiatus uh, from sp supposedly beginning the season or supposed to have began the season uh, in February, now just starting here in the early May. Now, John Book, they won the title last season. They've won five of the last six K-League titles. So this is a team in the midst of a dynasty. Now, there's a bit of a caveat to last season's championship because they did just win it over Ulsan by goal difference. It was They both uh, finished on the same number of points, 79, but it took an eight-goal swing for John Book to actually lift the trophy. Now, John Book go in uh, as such a very good, talented team, and they are managed by Jose Morias, who used to manage uh, or used to be the assistant coach to Jose Mourinho at Chelsea, Inter Milan, and at Real Madrid. So he's got gobs of experience and knowledge. So he'll be taking that uh, into this season once more. He uh, led the team to the title last season. Suwon were an underachiever last season. Now, this is a team that is ha or has got the money of the Samsung company behind them. Now, if you are not familiar with Asian sports leagues, baseball or basketball or soccer, most of the teams are owned by giant conglomerates. So Samsung owns Suwon, the Hyundai company, the Hyundai Motor Company own Junbok. So we've got all of these companies putting money behind these teams. Now, Samsung were or uh, Suwon, that is, were very much underachievers last season. I believe they finished eighth in the league. Um, they did have the league's leading goal scorer in Adam Taggart. Uh, he's an Australian who will be playing again this season with Suwon. He had 20 goals, led the league, but his 20 goals showed that there wasn't much or many other scorers in that Suwon team. So this is a team that could struggle once more this term, even though Taggart is back. Now, I like John Book to go in and to win this game. They're going to be playing at home, and I have full confidence that they're going to come away with a victory. I think Suwon, they've got uh, a lot of those same foreign players from last season, and despite carrying over that um, continuity, I don't think that we're going to see too many things change, especially going up against the champions. Now, again, there's that caveat of the league starting a few months late, so there's always that to keep in mind. But I'm going John Book. On this game, and just to look at a little head-to-head, -head, if we can bring that up, we can see that John Book has won the last two games uh, between these teams. Actually, sorry, they've won uh, unbeaten <laughs> in the last six games uh, there, and you can see that last season, uh, all three games went their way, and uh, two clean sheet wins and a draw against Suwon. So I'm going John Book on this game. They're going to be playing at home, and they should start the season off with a win. Now let's take a look at a game coming up on Saturday. And I'm just going to go up here and click down on our calendar. As you can see here, it's simple things to use here on the VIP club. And we're just going to wait for this to load. It's just going to take a couple of seconds. But you can get a breath of fresh air and a little sip of water while you're waiting. But we're going to have a, another big game coming up here in the K-League on Saturday. And that is going to be last season's runners-up, Ulsan, who is another club owned by the Hyundai Corporation. Except this is the Hyundai uh, Construction uh, wing uh, of the of the big conglomerate. So this is a team that is got money behind it as well. They finished runners ups last season. Only eight goals separated them from lifting the title. Now they're going to be taking on a very interesting team, and this is a team that you need to keep your eye on this season in the K League because this is a team you may not want to bet with. Uh, you may want to bet against this team most of the time. Now this is Sangju Sangmu. This is a team that is made up of military, uh, this is the military team basically, in South Korea. Now, every male in South Korea must serve two years of military service. In doing so, all the players who are serving their military service from clubs around Korea, they go and they play for Sangju during those two years. So this is a team that does not have continuity from year to year. This is a team that is made up simply of players serving their two-year military service. It's a competitive team. They do have some good players on this team because, again, these players are called from all of the teams from around the, the country. However, this is not a team that is going to most likely compete for a title. Interestingly, Sangju have already been relegated for next season. So they are going to be relocating to a new city after this year. 
and they have already accepted that they will be relegated. So only one team in this year's K-League is going to end up being relegated. Sangju will be the other one. Now, that's going to possibly be um, one of the reasons that this team is not going to uh, do very well this season. They don't have anything to play for. They're going to be relegated. They know it. They're playing for pride is all. And a lot of times playing for pride, especially when you're playing the better teams in uh, in a league, you're not going to come out on top. So I'm definitely going to back Ulsan on this game. I think this is a very uh, a good team. They should put together another good season there in Ulsan. And if we just take a quick look at the head-to-head, we can scroll down here and we can look at this and we can see that last season, there are three meetings. Ulsan were able to pick up an away victory, a draw at home, and then a big 5-1 win at home. So I'm going to go with Ulsan on this one, most definitely. I don't think Sangju are going to provide much of a resistance this season. And I do think that they will, at the end of the year, uh, regardless of already being relegated, I think they're going to end up finishing down near maybe the bottom two or three of the K-League. So I'm backing Ulsan on this one. And I think you should too, as well as Z-Code is backing me, uh, or I'm agreeing with the Z-Code prediction uh, on this one. So we're going to take a look at one more game. And this is a game that's going to be taking place on Sunday. So this is a game that's going to be between Gangwon and FC Seoul. So we've clicked on our calendar. We're looking at Sunday, the 10th of May, coming back here. And we've got, again, like I said, 12 games going on this weekend in the Korean K-League. So you're going to have quite a good opportunity. If you love betting on soccer, then you're going to have a great weekend uh, betting on the K-League. And of course, as you can see, there's also games from the Belarusian League going on this weekend. But I'm going with Seoul versus Gangwon. This game is going to be going on uh, in Gangwon. Now, Seoul finished third last season in the Korean K-League on 53 points. Sorry, 56 points, that is. Seoul finishing third, and Gangwon finished uh, sixth in the league, and they finished on five, uh, 50 points. So just six points separating these two teams. And the big problem with Gangwon uh, at the end of last season was allowing goals. They scored 56, but they conceded 58. So that is going to be a big problem going into this weekend. Uh, another problem that Gangwon is going to have is that um, all teams in the Korean K-League are allowed four foreign players uh, onto the rosters. Um, this team is only going to be going in with one foreign player this season. Uh, they had three last year. They've only been able to bring back one, perhaps a financial reason for that. So finances could play a part in their campaign. So is stacked with four uh, four foreign players as they go into this season. Now, Seoul is one of the big teams in the league. Um, I know years ago they were owned by the LG Corporation. I believe the team has passed on to some different hands um, since then, but this is a team that has a lot of money behind it. Now, years ago, uh, over a decade ago, I got to live in Seoul for around three years, and this was my team. This is the team I supported, and I went to uh, games on a regular basis, had a season ticket for one season. I uh, got to see them a lot. So, um, I've seen the ups and downs of this club. This is a club that, despite their money and despite some success, they don't necessarily always end up winning the league or, or uh, you know, they, they kind of somehow end up botching things, if you will. So um, I think Seoul are a far better team than Gang Wong going into this game uh, as we start the season. And I think that they will claim in a way victory uh, in this game. And we're going to look at the head to head real quickly. But you can see there, last season didn't go so well for Seoul uh, in 2019. So we had four games between these two teams last season. Seoul picking up just one win of those four games, and that was uh, an away victory at Gangwon. Uh, they did lose at Gangwon in October of last year, 3-2, uh, and their two home games went uh, as draws. But I think that early in the season, with the things the way they have been, and with Seoul having that uh, that firepower from their four foreign players, and also having a very good academy. Uh, they've brought through some really good players over the years. I think Seoul will pick up the win in this game. I think it will be a narrow victory, uh, and the score prediction there is 2-1. to one. I think this is that's a, a great score prediction. This is going to be a very narrow win for FC Seoul, and they're going to get on track and possibly, possibly challenge for the title this season. Again, they finished third last season, but uh, it was something around 23 points separating them from the top two teams. So I'm backing Seoul on this game, and 
Uh, hopefully you will be too, and hopefully they'll be picking up a win. Now, guys, you can go over to Z Code System and look at the VIP club and get all of these picks and great information for all six games that will be going on on the peninsula this weekend. You can also check out the Soccer Buddy tool, and you can use that to help you make wise investments in these games, as well as the Belarusian games that are going on this weekend. And hopefully, fingers crossed, in a week or two, we'll be having some other games with the Bundesliga, uh, Denmark coming back, Sweden, as well as Poland all on the way back. And you can stay tuned here on YouTube and at Z Code System for all of our videos and our picks for those leagues from week to week. Guys, thank you for watching so much. We love bringing you these videos every week, and we would love it if you could comment down below. Let us know who you're backing this weekend, which teams that you are betting on in the K-League or in the Belarusian League, and uh, also let us know what you want to see here on the Z-Code System YouTube page because we want to give you everything that you're looking for. Uh, also, guys, give a like and a subscription or a subscribe to our page here on YouTube, and we will bring you this every week here on YouTube. Thanks, guys. Good luck this weekend. Enjoy the return of the K-League. I know I'll be watching on Friday morning. So good luck with your betting, and we will see you soon here on Z-Code System.